People for a rain here on another video on Girls Digs b -b 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 Battle 2. <laughs> so, this is a video of what to do for a while. Okay, now we're going to get into much more specifics. So, what I want to do is I want to talk about antiques and dragon chains. All right, breaking them down between all of their different, um, their different abilities, different stat boosts different categories so it's going to be kind of like a video similar to when i did the whole squad setup kind of video all right now i want to go then i want to get into all of this now because the entrance exam is a event which allows you to see all of the antiques and everything and the um gear and stuff like that i wanted i thought this would be a great time to kind of get into all of those specifics so let's get straight into this anyway. all right so let's say I'll just click on Raphael. Let's go to her gear, right? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> the first thing you want to focus on is maxing out the standard top gear, okay? You can get any of these angel suit gears as long as you do forging, which I'm going to show you in a moment, okay? You want to focus on getting all of these up to the maximum because you're going to get super stat boost. You're going to get, as you can see, additional 16% HP, 21% attack, and 8% HP. This is all great for surviving and getting a bit more damage and stuff. All right, now in terms of forging, let's go quickly into that. Uh, as I did, I did that kind of quickly, let me start that again. So you go into your bag, you click forge on the bottom right here, and in this area here is where you do forging. You've got your weapons, you've got your clothes, your headgear, and your bottoms. That's the, oh, that's all of the four different um, uh, categories that you can upgrade on in terms of the standard, the standard gear that is, okay? So, I don't have anything for the weapons right now, but let's go to headwear, for example. Now, as you can see here, this goes in different levels. You start from this one here, which is the yellow one, the top left, and you work your way along, okay? As you keep working your way along through forging, you'll just keep going up different levels to in terms of your forging and your creating. So right at the moment, let's say for example, I'm on this green one here at two star. If I press that right there, as you can see, I managed to attain eight of those um, shiny school ties. <laughs> so you click it again, you can follow it by the little red dot on the top um, right hand screen to kind of know where you currently are in terms of your forging levels, in terms of the gear. So then you press forge again, you see that, and then I've got those, uh, I don't know, what were those, headbands or something? Uh, bunny ears, there you go. And then you go up to the more orange level. So the orange level is now a different, uh, uh, the next level up in terms of like power and, um, and how good it is and everything. And um, yeah, you just keep pressing it, to be honest, until you, keep, until you can work more. Now, how this works, right, is that once you've gotten up to the highest level you can for that moment, the way you get more um, more requirements for that particular gear is by going to your thing here. Let me call it again. So your um, present box. Oh, I've taken all the loot just then. Sorry. So you go to your present box, which is here, right? Which you just, which is, which I just showed you. Sorry. By the way, I've got a little bit of a headache, so do bear with me. I'm sometimes losing my words a little bit because I've got a really bad headache right now. So bear with me. Anyway, so you go to your present box and you press the loot icon. Okay. In that, you'll be able to attain different types of gear. When you look in your campaign as well you can see the potential gear that you can get. So you can get stuff like the maid cake, the maid apron, maid headband and stuff like that. You can even get as high as a yellow one here, which is like the feather fan, um, the kimono, flower tie and hibiscus. Okay. So while you do campaign and this is automatic, you just get that as you go along, you're able then to get some of this gear that you're then able to forge back in here, all right? So as you keep going along, going along, you're gonna need certain requirements for all these things. So let me go back to the headwear, for example. I was on this one, right? Now, as you can see, for me to get another headgear to be able to then upgrade to the uh, maid's hat, or whatever it's called, I forgot what it's called, but the maid's gear, 
you I need to have another two more of the bunny ears which is here so what's going to happen is that as the campaign goes along I'm going to be able to get some more lower gear or even higher gear to then upgrade these here you see what I mean so you're just going to just follow it along really just wait for that little red dot to come up like you can see on the bottoms here just wait for that red dot click on that one press forge and just keep going as long as you've got the money it does require money it does require 105k in money um but as you progress you know what i mean 100 and 105k money isn't much at all so it's not really a big deal to be honest so all you gotta do is just keep going along and until you stop where where you where you are here and then wait for some more loot and gear to come along from the campaign and there's other means to get gear as well and stuff like the um exclusive task which i've covered already in a few times but i'll just show you really quickly again when you complete these exclusive tasks here you will get gear for that you'll get actually four star gear which is really really useful because you'll get four star gear of this quality here um and then you're able once you get enough then you're able to go to the five star and then eventually the six star so the exclusive task is really really good for that you're able to get gear really really quickly really powerful gear really quickly especially when you're starting out in the game it's absolutely amazing for that okay so anyway that's enough of that let's go back to the gear on here so Raphael gear so like i said once you get to this stage here you'll be able to get all of these lovely gears and get as much boosts as possible okay so that's how you do that next thing let's move on to the dragon gears and this is the really juicy stuff now this is really cool because I don't have all of these dragon jades, you see what I mean? So I wouldn't be able to show you visually what they all do. But because of this particular event, this is a great time to take advantage of that and show you how this all works, okay? So you've got different dragon jades here, all right? You've got ones for specifically for HP, you've got ones for attack, you've got ones for precision, crit damage, armor break, uh, blocking, skill damage, speed and even holy damage okay now i'm going to break all of these down into different cat i'm going to break all of these down i'm going to show you where you need to go also to check out what each of these mean as well so attack pretty simple pretty simple really let's just move there so you can see what that says so on one of the uh, dragon jades you get 2800 attack and also a 31 percent boost in attack as well so that 31 percent boost in attack is multiplied by whatever base attack you have so as you can see this Raphael here at limit break three has 85,390 in attack okay so that particular dragon jade is going to boost that attack by 31 percent that base attack plus also give an extra 2800 base attack as well okay now the next dragon jade you can see here has 16,000 HP and 31% HP. So again, it's all about multipliers, okay? So currently, this uh, Raphael has 137,000... One, uh, how do you pronounce that? Yeah, 100, 100, 137,000, 1,229. I probably said that completely wrong, but anyway, bear with me. So... It's that amount of HP multiplied with the Dragon Jade here of 37% extra plus the 16,000, yeah? So it's all multiplying, right? Moving on. You've got the one down here that says precision of 21%. Now, this is interesting. Let me show you where to go for precision, right? What you do is from the front page, you press menu, you go to help, right and then you press battle okay now this will break down what all of the different uh how would you say like precision armor breaks so all of the different types of abilities that the gear have um you're able to find out here what they mean and plus and all other stuff like aura you know how does aura work when you combine different factions and you get a boost as well 
uh, faction rivalries, taking uh, taking um, advantage of weaknesses of the different rivalries. You'll be able to find that all here. So this is really really useful if you're starting out the game and you don't understand what it uh, don't understand what each of the uh, meanings mean. So let's go down to precision. Here's precision here. Precision lowers the probability of the attack blocking an attack. Furthermore, every 1% of precision will grant a extra 0.3% of damage. The extra damage will max out at 45%. Only damage based on the attack of the attacker will be increased. Yeah, so meaning the person that initiates the attack will only get that particular precision not just everybody so yeah that's how precision works all right so let's go back now let's go back to here so as you can see you get 21 percent precision now precision is going to be much much more useful especially these days now when we're having more blockers coming out so we've got people like ithil who has a something like a 70% block rate. And Fenrir, who has a very high block rate, is what I think is around 70, 80 or something. So they have massive block rates. And what we're going to need to have is a counteraction to those blocks, right? So precision will lower down the probability of them being able to block that attack. You see what I mean? So the percentage will go down um, by 20%, uh, 21%, sorry. And then Ithil's activation rate of her block will then go down to 50 instead of 70 or 49 to be precise so yeah that's how that works and that's going to be really really crucial moving forward in the game without a doubt i think hopefully more girls with good precision rates will come out i think there have been some i think guan yin of the human faction i think she does precision if i remember correctly but there haven't been really many girls that have much good precision rates. But I'm sure that as like the event anniversary comes up and they release more girls, they're going to have to have someone with a good precision rate to counter attack the blocking. Because the blocking, um, which I'm going to show you in a moment, reduces down quite a bit of damage. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. We've got the Dragon Jade on the right, which is 52 percent crit damage, 20 percent crit, and 4 percent attack. This is one of the much more or probably i'd say most powerful ones in terms of dealing damage base do not underestimate the power of crit damage it will do a lot of damage okay what i used to do before was with my kongming i used to use the attack the 31 percent attack because i was like oh, okay so the more attack she gets the more she'll be able to heal but that's from a healing perspective but when you look at it from a power perspective Kong Ming can do some decent damage. I've seen many results where Kong Ming can sometimes do the most damage to the guild bosses, for example, right? Um, she can do in the millions very easily, may easily do in millions because when you double up all her attack, she hits, well, she hits, she doesn't hit everyone anymore, but she used to hit everybody, I should say. But either way, she does hit four random girls. And if you're doing just let's say a hundred thousand because that's easy enough to attain a hundred thousand damage between four girls you do that about what two three times you're in the million already so sometimes i can see call doing like four million five million six million you know what i mean especially over time so definitely good stuff i would really really recommend um using crit damage crit and four percent attack especially for those types of girls so um you know i think hexa would probably do well with that even though she might want to get attack as well, more attack, but, you know, so Hexa, um, definitely, like I said, Kong Ming, there's a few other people that use, uh, that take advantage of crit, ah, um, Nobunaga as well, um, will probably be pretty good for crit damage, what I'll probably do is I'll show you the, um, I've got a image of the best gear and, um, well, Dragon Jades and Antiques for each girl in the game. So we'll use that as a reference point, actually, as well, for some of the top tier girls that you might be using. So, yeah, but that's crit damage. Um, let's go over what crit damage is as well, just to be sure. Um, but it's definitely like a multiplier for damage, but I'm going to show you here. Crit damage determines how much extra damage is dealt when performing a critical strike. The highest crit damage that an attack can have is 150%. So can you imagine 
that you've already multiplied all of your base attack with let's say you know 20 percent here 30 percent there you know what i mean then you've got like your skill damage and then you do a crit as well and you're able to get another 100 potentially another 150 percent of uh crit damage as well so this is trust me the calculations in this is crazy man it's proper, proper crazy stuff so yeah that's crit damage all right so yeah um let's move on you've got the dragon jade with the crit so if you just want to throw, if you've got enough crit damage because there are some girls who build up crit damage over time nobunaga is one of them and if you want to have a, a a different option of just being able to activate the critical strike instead of having the extra critical damage then you can get have one with like this one where you're able to just get a, a bit extra crit damage but then have 24 percent hp which is kind of useful because it's like a bit of like attacking and defending at the same time because there's not really i mean blocking is defense don't get me wrong but there the, but the stat of um the armor isn't usually always that that high so you might want to have extra hp just to kind of have a better uh, uh, survivability with um with your girls and stuff so that extra hp might come in handy now moving on armor break 44 percent armor break 100 and uh, sorry 1100 percent attack and 18 percent attack now this is interesting armor break is for the base armor of your girls uh where, where did I go? it's for the base armor of your girls so again let's just keep with Raphael. Raphael's armor is 1794 okay it's the little blue one down here and that's the one uh, that is that will reduce down um, the amount of damage she receives. All right? So let's get into both armor and armor break. All right? Let's go back into battle. See here, armor helps to reduce damage from your opponents. All right, simple as that. Okay. Now armor break, armor break decreases your opponent's armor, allowing you to deal more damage to the opponent. The maximum amount of armor break that can be reached is 100%. So because it's percent based, that literally means that you're able to reduce down 100% of a person's armor. You see what I mean? Now, what I might actually ask the GM is the armor that, let's say, Raphael has, how much of 1794 calculates into reduction in damage? What is that? Is it just literally... 1,794 points of damage? I don't know. Something tells me that's probably not the case. Because all it says there is that armor helps to reduce damage of the opponents. But what does that amount calculate into the um, into the damage reduction? So that's something I'm going to probably ask the GM actually and find out about. Because I was just cause I was thinking about that. Like It can't just be literally 1,794. I mean, that would be nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be absolutely nothing. So I'm not sure if it calculates in that way, but I'll, I'll find that out for you and I'll probably put a message afterwards about that. So anyway, um, so yeah, that's what Armor Break does. So Armor Break, like you said, like shows here, says it can reduce down a maximum of 100%, which is great because, you know, percentages are based upon 100. Um, of course, if you're lucky, I mean, you might have other kind of boosts in Armor which pull it above 100%, like... Uh, Nanny in the fairy faction, I think she boosts armor, and I think Hottie as well. I think Hottie boosts armor too. But I could be wrong about that. I'm just trying to remember with them two. It's def one of them two definitely boosts up armor. So if that goes over 100, percent then it's just the 100 percent minus whatever. Let's say it's 124, you'll be back down to 24 in percent in terms of armor and stuff like that. So yeah, armor break works really well. On girls like Sonya, who have a very, very high amount of armor, as like 3,000. So, um, yeah. And her armor helps her to survive for a long time in, um, let's say, like guild boss, guild boss events where, uh, where you might have to go all the way up to round 15 in terms of dealing loads of damage and stuff like that. Sonya's really, really good for that. But in PvP now, she's not that great because you might have a girl who will reduce down those armors. Like I've got Psychic, for example, 
and she'll drop your armor much <laughs> before I can't remember if I've still got an armor break actually. Let me just check what yeah, I've got from her. Nah, I've put her to speed now. Before I had a 44% armor break plus uh reducing the, uh, the target's armor by 15% as well. So I was doing nearly 60% armor break, you know what I mean, within the first turn towards um Sonya. So yeah, trust me, it, it will certainly help with those type of girls. What I might also mention to the GMs is that we don't actually have many girls that have like super high armor. The only one I really can see is really Sonya, you know. As you can see, Sonya's got 2,684. But um, we don't have many girls, I don't think, that have like high, really high armors like Sonya. Might be something worth asking the GMs. But anyway, moving on. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's get through this. So, yeah, we've done armor break now. Ah, so, yes, we're on to the 25% block and 26% HP. Now, blocking is another way of reducing down damage. Long story short. Right, I'm going to show you on here the actual explanation, of course. Block determines the probability of blocking an attack. Blocking an, ec an attack successfully will reduce 30% of damage taken. If the attack was a critical strike, blocking will reduce 50% of the damage taken. Only damage based on the attack of the attacker will be reduced by blocking. Okay, so it's just basically that particular girl. So, when a critical strike happens, then it triggers off more of the damage to be reduced, which is an extra 20%. That's really useful. So that means that, you know, that the calculations are going to be kind of equal if you've got a good amount of blocking uh, rate put on a girl when crit damage happens. All right. So that's really, really useful. Moving on. We've got skill damage so you've got skill damage and precision so this one's a really really cool one if you are focusing on a girl that might be able to do great damage but then uh also reduce down the person's um blocking rate so this one might be useful for someone like ithel if you're trying to take out an ithel the first thing you want to do is drop down the blocking um and obviously do a big maybe um aoe attack or a big kind of single target attack that will really hurt her. so this will help with that because skill damage just multiplies you know what i mean the damage that's already there from that particular skill but as always let's go back to the battle thing here and we will look down what skill damage means as you can see extra skill damage gives bonus to but gives bonus damage to skill attacks so like i just said pretty simple really bog standard any of the skills so let's say you've got a skill that does like 200 percent attack um when that skill activates then the extra still the extra skill damage will then be an extra you know 50 percent of that so then it's 250 simple as that really like i said bear with me i'm a bit ill today um so yeah so that's that uh moving on ah yeah holy damage now holy damage is a really cool one i did a I actually did a video about holy damage calculations before because I didn't realize what holy damage is. I thought it was something to do with the angels and the demons or something like that. And it was just some special damage that they do. But holy damage is actually completely different. Um, what homie holy damage does is it will ignore the armor on a girl. Long story short. So I, I was talking about Sonya earlier on having 2,684 like at 9 star. She has over 3,000 at 10 star, right? So that amount of armor is going to reduce down a certain amount of damage, right? Now, what this does, this holy damage thing does, is that 30% of your attack, after all the calculations have been put in and stuff, 30% of it is not going to be calculated by that armor. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to be calculated by it. So that's really cool. So when you've got someone like Sonya who is soaking up all the damage and doing counterattacks and all that kind of stuff, this particular Dragon Jade 
when you activate it on, you know, your attacker, your, your attacker with, uh, and she activates a skill or whatever, um, this means that the armor that Sonya has, 30% of it is not going to be calculated. So whatever the exact calculation is for Sonya's high armor in terms of how it calculates into back into reducing down damage, 30% of that in holy damage is not going to be calculated which is really, really useful, right? And I'm going to show you the explanation again of how that works as well. So when you go here, holy damage, as you can see here, it says holy damage will not be affected by the armor of the target, but will be affected by damage reduction. So I need to know if that includes blocking or not. If you know the answer to that question, please leave that down below. Because damage reduction is its own different type of uh, ability. Because you have girls that will just reduce down damage reduction in other ways. You see what I'm saying? So, let me know. I don't know if that includes blocking. I don't think it does. But uh, it will be interesting to see if blocking is part of that as well. But as you can see, it doesn't state that at all anyway. So it probably is only based upon armor and not based upon blocking. Even though it only says damage reduction. So that's an interesting one. Very interesting. Cool. So yeah, moving on. Let's go back to her. Still got a bit to cover, and we've got speed and 23% HP. Now, speed is, an again, an interesting attribute. That's what we'll call it. I keep calling it categories. Attribute. It's a very interesting attribute because speed is about initiative. Speed is about initiative and how quickly your girl is going to attack before an enemy girl. So having extra speed means that if you want a girl to activate their skill really quickly and fast, this is definitely the Dragon Jade for you, this one here. And of course, it comes with an extra 23% HP increase as well. So what I've been doing with the entrance exam, which I showed in another video, was some of my girls had the extra 100 speed, and then I gave them the 50% energy so that they would activate their skills straight away. And that really helps with getting the initiative, especially when you've got an event where it's kind of like a free for all and nobody's got uh, more powerful players than anybody else. It's all like a level playing field. So the best way, like I said, to take advantage is to have the initiative. So that really helps. So I think speed is really, really great. Again, I'll show you what it says on the battle here. Speed determines the order that girls attack in battle. Higher speed allows girls to attack first every round. So you see what I mean? It's about initiative and uh, being quick with uh, the attacks. So that's, of course, really, really useful. So yeah, I hope that breaks down pretty much all of, you know, the Dragon Jades and stuff like that. So now we're going to move on to the Crystals, which is, of course, really, really interesting too. So yeah, let's get into that. You can find out any of this information like I showed you from going to the help, battle, and then all of the explanations will be there. Now, let's move on to the crystals. There are tons of crystals. Oh my gosh. And crystals are really, really fun because the difference between crystals and dragon jays is that the crystals have more of a variation in terms of the attributes that, that you will get from them. So as you can see here, let's start with the top one. Uh, hold on a second now. Let me make this make a bit more sense. Let's remove that. Remove. There we go. Make a bit more sense that way. So it's not confusing. So, Punishment Sword gives you an 18% attack and a 40% speed. Okay? So this is definitely for someone who you want to attack really, really fast. You know? You want to you wanna get off an attack really quickly and powerful. If you attach it to a human, you can see there it says a 18% damage reduction. So again, it, damage reduction is not calculated into precision. Yes. So this 18% damage reduction is not 
going to be affected by precision because it's, it's it clearly states there that damage reduction is not affected it's only the girl's armor their natural armor that they have okay so that's a good example of what i was saying now so you're going to get a damage reduction of 18 percent. so you're going to be able to survive better attack faster and attack more powerful so that's pretty cool that's a bit of a very very um, variation one Right, so the chain blade axe. This came out with um, Fenrir, I believe, and it's definitely um, <laughs> left this mark. Because think about it: you've got twenty-five percent attack, you get a bit extra HP, and you get a hundred percent armor break. That is crazy. You put that on a girl with an AOE attack; everyone's armor is getting dropped down by a hundred percent. While those calculations of damage are being put through, that is absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? So you're doing stupid amounts of damage with the chain blade axe, without a doubt. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing. So that makes sense. Let's move on. We've got the Rogs Bite. Wargs? Wargs? Something like that? Yeah, Wargs Bite. Um, so yeah, another really, another definitely good one. So 80% attack, 30% block. And if you attach them to a ghost, you get an extra um, crit damage as well. So, actually, wait, no, I think this, sorry, excuse me, no, that, the Chain Blade X wasn't the one I don't, well, maybe they both came out around the same time, but I think this is actually Fenrir's weapon, because that is literally made for her. She has around a 70% block, plus she gets the extra 30% plus attack, and because she's a ghost as well, she gets the crit damage, and that is definitely made for Fenrir, yeah. you got the Neutron Blades. Which is a ability, which um, is actually in the shop at the moment for the Atelier Valera. It gives you 20% attack, 50% speed, and 25% extra control rate. Now, control rate is an interesting one. I couldn't give you an exact definition for what how that uh, works, so I'm going to see if it's on here. Ah, uh, here we go. Increases the rate the enemy will be affected by your control skills. This status will be calculated together with the target's immunity. So yeah, that's interesting. So that's to do with uh, crowd control. And uh, crowd control is about stuff like silence, petrifying, freezing... Uh, stunning, that type of stuff. That's all contrary. So you get an extra 25% of that um, calculated into the other girl's kind of uh, reductions in crowd control. So yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, where am I going? Sorry. I want to click on the wrong one there. Entrance is um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Where is... Oh, there's a fail. Yeah. Right, so... Moving on, so that that's the neutron blitz. So it gives you that extra percent, extra um, crowd control. Uh, what we've got is silver mirage. This gives you a eighteen percent attack, forty percent armor break, and a thirty percent block. So that would be good for Ithel, uh, definitely without a doubt. The block rate for her will bring her up to hopefully about one hundred percent. So she is building up more of her pursuit stacks. Um, as you know, I mean, as the block rate goes up, I've got something similar to this, but mine was a bit lower down in level, I believe. Uh, which one do I have again? I've got one like that. Yeah, I've got this one, the Judgment Sword. So it gives a forty percent block. So that's the one I've got. So this one's like a bit like a level up in a sense for the block rate, anyway. Burning blades. This is definitely a more defensive um, gear or antique or whatever. It's definitely more of a defensive one. You get 25% attack, oh, sorry, 25% HP, 18% attack, and prevents three lethal damages, including DOT skills, basic attacks, but excluding the damage from marks. When it says marks, that's stuff like the yin yang mark from Priestess. The critical strike mark from Gabriel and the round mark from Scythe. So that type of damage is not going to be calculated into preventing lethal damages. I don't know what prevent lethal damages mean. Does it mean it just completely shuts down the uh, the attack or does it reduce? Again, a question to ask the devs. I don't know what it means by prevent. 
does it just completely shut down all the damage that was meant to be calculated or is it like a set amount or something like that so that's an interesting thing i need to ask the devs as well to get an idea so yeah if you know any to if you know any of the answers to the questions uh please leave them in the comments below so i can even understand myself because uh there's a lot of gear here that i don't actually uh have access to so um i don't know what all of them mean so yeah moving on uh echoes this is definitely um the weapon that came with isa and jacob so yeah it gives you 25 percent attack 70 percent speed and 50 percent on block so that's pretty cool you know again got a bit of attack you've got it's got a bit of everything there that's a bit of an all-rounder because you gain a bit you get you gain a nice little bit of attack you take advantage of um initiative with speed and then you've got a 50 percent block rate to stop down damage as well so that's a pretty cool one definitely fusion umbrella this one here is uh well regarded as a uh, very popular gear if you get it um a lot of the uh guides that will tell you about you know um, setting up squads and stuff especially the uh tier list guide that i was going to mention to you before it will have fusion umbrella on a few of them um because of the massive amount of damage reduction you can attain plus the immune control as well um it's a very very defensive um antique and it will certainly help a lot damage 30 percent damage reduction and 25 percent extra immune control is absolutely massive when it comes to um having your building up your defenses and not being able to be crowd controlled without a doubt plus obviously the 21 percent attack boost is also really good thorn's heart this one came up before as well so this is a big damage dealer one so you get crit of 50 percent um so 15 percent crit 50% in crit damage and 21% in attack. That is massive. That is a lot. Um, in the Wings of Icarus. So this one is actually going to be quite useful for <clears throat> for um, Ithor and Fenrir and stuff like that who have higher block rates. A 70% precision means that that's going to be a 70% chance lowered for them to do their block rate attacks. So the Wings of Icarus might be really useful in uh, futures to come without a doubt plus you get a 25 percent attack and 60 percent extra on skill damage that is massive that is massive that is a big big counter attack for people like uh them two who block a lot fake crystal uh this one's a really really popular one uh as well because of the energy boost now energy boost right i'm going to show you here Energy boost is really, really useful because it makes you trigger off the special attack pretty much within the first turn. All girls start with 50 plus energy, halfway. So when you put the extra 50, of course you're going to get 100. And from there, you're going to trigger off your um, attack from the beginning. So let me show you the energy one. Every girl starts with 50 energy when the battle begins. A girl will gain 50 energy when she attacks the enemy and will gain 10 energy when she is also attacked. If she takes a critical strike, she will gain 20% energy. A girl can only use her active skill when she has 100 or more energy. When she has 100 or more, every extra energy will be counted as a 1% of extra skill damage. So that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't seem to have a limit um, but you can only build up your energy to a certain amount I believe but there are definitely girls who gain energy from other girls using their attacks so that's pretty cool so someone like Rife uh, which I'll show you here someone like Rife right Whenever an ally releases their active skill, gains 30% energy and heals herself. So that's whenever a girl uses an active skill. So if all your girls use their six skills, right? And they all come before Rife. And you already have an energy antique on her 100%. All of the rest of that energy that she's receiving that'll be times six at six twelve eighteen that's another hundred and eighty percent hundred and eighty percent energy right so oh shit that means that she could actually get potentially a hundred and eighty percent extra attack just based on the energy she has alone that's mad because you saw you saw there 
it's, you saw that there, right? It said every one energy will amount to one percent extra attack, right? Let's make let's make sure I saw that correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Every extra energy will be counted as one percent of extra skill damage. So if all of the girls trigger off their attacks before her yeah and it's six girls to a team right and she gains 30 percent at each time so that's yeah so that's six times that's 30 or three times six or six times three so six 12 18 so yeah it's going to be literally 180 then isn't it because it's obviously by 30 so it's at 30 times 6 or 60 times 30 sorry that's what i meant i do maths in a weird way sorry 60 times 30 of course that's 180 so um wow that's quite a lot and then you add all of the extra other boosts you can potentially get that's quite a lot so you can see how damage calculation is very very interesting stuff um rife is very powerful you know what i mean especially when you look at it from that sense and there's other girls as well who gain energy and stuff. I don't know if Ishtar and Jacob do. Uh, no, they don't. But there's other girls who gain energy as well like that. There's one of the demons, maybe... Is it Lucifer? Maybe Lucifer. Anyway, moving on. So let's go back to what we were talking about. So that was the fake crystal. Uh, you got the key to heaven. This one isn't all of that to me. I think there's better ones, but this one is okay, I suppose, if you want crit, extra crit damage. So the holy damage is pretty cool, though. So you get 30% uh, holy damage, 80% attack, and you get a crit, 15% extra crit. Critical for angels. I think these ones are a bit more lower down uh, the list slightly. Uh, so you've got 80% attack, 40% uh, HP, and for demons, you get a 25% extra in control immunity or immune control so that's pretty cool so you know um anyone who's trying to crowd control you there's going to be a 50 percent chance sorry 25 percent extra chance that's not going to happen when it's attached to a demon these are some of the ones i've got so i've got these super super powerful ones yeah but some of these ones i've definitely got so this is the one i've got on if all you get an extra 90 percent to a ranger now the ranger right 90 percent extra damage to a ranger right is going to be girls who have i'm going to show you here this job right here on the bottom right hand screen so the one with the little bow and arrow is the ranger so any girl that has that particular job as a ranger is going to get 90 percent extra attack damage um based upon the fact i've got that antique set up on them yeah so that's pretty much that. Uh, so yeah. So I'm just getting back. There we go. So that's that one. You've got, of course, the perception watch. I'm not going to go all the way down the list of these. You can click these yourself to kind of see them. Uh, as I go along, I'm kind. I'm just trying to explain what each of the attributes are. Attributes are. So like, if I get some repeats that like you can just check them out yourself and stuff because you know what you're doing now so anyway yes you've got the antique 50 percent hp 20 percent block that's really good attack and crit that's really really great um invisible cloaks really good for damage reduction yeah that's a really good one as well because you need your defenses this would be really good for turin without a doubt um because that means that someone who has precision as well that damage reduction is not going to be affected by precision too you got the fate mirror, uh, fate mirror, which is a really good one because you get fifty percent energy, plus skill damage of fifty percent, and then when it's attached to a demon, you get another forty percent. That is ridiculous. This one would be really good for Rife, uh, Lucifer. You know, what I mean, any demon, obviously, but Rife and Lucifer definitely. This would be really useful for them. Um, dear, dear, got their demonic wings. I have this on. Uh, I've got this one. I have this on Kongming a lot of the time. Because Kong is a little bit slow, so it really helps to kind of boost up a bit of her speed, uh, which is uh, really useful for her. Plus the extra crit. Uh, Kong Ming, for me, I focus on crit damage for her, plus healing, of course, but the crit damage is quite useful. And it all gets calculated back into healing afterwards as well. Got the Queen's Crown. Oh, again, another one for damage reduction. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, that was a really good defensive one, actually. Uh, that was really cool. This this one here would be quite good for Miu because you get 40% HP and then you get another 18% of the fact that she's a fairy. So that Queen's Crown one, that would be really good for her, I think. Uh, what have you got here? Golden Apple, six, uh, 90% damage done to a mage. So some of them are mage category, plus an extra uh, fairy damage of 40% crit damage. That I wouldn't mind putting on Kongming as well, actually. Saints Will, I've got this one. Um, this is the one I've got. So it's a 90% damage to a ranger plus an extra 15% crit. Um, same thing. So you just get like different ones that do extra damage for the different jobs. So like Assassin plus the attack. You get, you know, extra damage on a warrior plus an extra 15. So a lot of them are the same when we kind of start coming down here. This one's pretty good. I've got this one and it's got like a 40% extra skill damage plus 90% damage to a priest as well. So that's a really a heavy attacking one uh, you've got the butterfly mirror you've got the bloom all so they're all kind of quite similar you know just check them really and just find out about them really and stuff like that um, I've pretty much explained most of what each of them mean uh, you've got the fate guide the fate guide as well so again another one I've got just the skill damage without the extra bonuses and stuff but you've got tons here you've got absolutely tons here you've got the black magic hat that reduces down 30% damage as well, and yeah, you've got loads of them that kind of do little extra things like that. Once you get down past the black, uh, the black magic hat, the rest of them, they're only doing two particular attributes, as you can see here. It's only two extra attributes without the bonus ones attached to the faction. So yeah, and then of course you've got the red ones as well that do similar to these ones here. None of them have like extra, oh no, some of them do have extra bonuses actually, sorry. They do, some of them do. So as you can see, if you're a fairy, you get an extra 12% plus the damage reduction and stuff like that. So yeah, just come into here, press gear select and just check them all out. Get a great idea of them and stuff like that. Um, I hope I've covered enough of it anyway to kind of give you a good idea about how to uh, set them up and stuff like that. Another video I'm going to do another time is um, combining different girls and how different girls benefit each other. So I might come back into this again at one stage um uh or oh, i might talk about gear actually sorry i might not have access to this because it's going to finish today but either way i'm going to have a video covering about like you know i mean the best way to set up your girls in terms of like good combinations and stuff like that so anyway yeah i hope that gave you enough information uh, my mouth is really really dry <laughs> so i'm going to leave the video here um like and subscribe of course leave down comments down below and i'll see you in the next video you take care